Since the coronavirus outbreak, economies around the world are crumbling. Regardless of how countries have dealt with the pandemic, it's becoming clear that once businesses have to operate with social distancing in place, the economy can be expected to shrink by about 10%. For the past few months, the global economy has been propped up by unprecedented levels of state aid. In Europe's five largest economies, one in five workers is currently in a special scheme where the state pays their wages. It's only as this support is gradually withdrawn that the wider cost of COVID-19 will become clear. It will impact all levels of the economy Let's take a look at one scenario. A small business owner runs a chain of restaurants. When the pandemic hits, he takes out a loan and furloughs his staff. He's not alone. In March, more cash was handed out to UK businesses than in any month since records began. After lockdown, he reopens, but business is slow, so he makes staff redundant and closes a restaurant as he can't pay the rent. This has already been happening. In the first quarter of the year, the share of commercial tenants who paid their rent on time in Britain fell from 90% to 60%, with big firms like Burger King admitting they couldn't make rent on empty restaurants. Without these rent payments, his landlord can no longer keep up with her mortgage. And ultimately, her bank is left with debt that cannot be repaid. Key economic factors already indicate that the world is facing a prolonged recession. Already, unemployment in America is at its highest rate since the Great Depression. But industries hit hardest by the COVID-19 pandemic are labour-intensive and rely on an army of low-paid workers. And it is these people who are particularly likely to lose their jobs. In America, you are already twice as likely to be made redundant if you're earning less than $20,000 a year than $80,000 a year. Just how deep is the crisis for the world economy? In an effort to stop the deadly virus, businesses have been forced to close and citizens isolated at home on an unprecedented scale worldwide. It's caused a unique economic crisis the impact of which will be greater on some industries in particular. The industries which are hit hardest are those which are related to the consumer. So that's retailing, that's entertainment, that's hospitality, both hotels and restaurants, many of which have simply been locked down. And many of these companies will have high costs, uh, which they'll need to keep meeting. So suddenly you have lots of costs continuing, absolutely no revenues, uh, which is the worst possible outcome for these businesses. But even if a business isn't directly losing out from people staying at home, lockdowns are having a devastating ripple effect. Modern industry relies on goods and materials crossing borders. When they can't, production around the world is endangered. The coronavirus caused a break in the biggest link in this vast global supply chain. The true extent of the damage to the world economy will only start to become clear with the speed and strength of its recovery. Hospitals built in days, grants for high street shops, pay for millions of furloughed workers, all crucial lifelines in the fight against coronavirus. But the cost of those schemes is mounting into hundreds of billions of pounds, the equivalent of thousands of pounds per household. How are we going to pay for all of this? Now, in normal times, the government spends billions on public services and benefits, everything from schools to pensions. In fact, last year, it spent over £800 billion on such schemes. And most of that is funded by our money, taxes on our incomes and things we buy in shops and services like air travel. But it's often a shortfall, a deficit. And the government tends to plug that by borrowing on the financial markets in the form of what's called bonds or IOUs to investors. Now last year, that deficit came to £55 billion. That's not small change, but investors aren't too fazed by that because they think the government's good for the money. It's never ever missed an interest payment. 
But now, given everything that's happened, that deficit is ballooning. According to official estimates, the bill could top £300 billion. Pounds. Now, that would be the biggest slice of the economy than at any point since the Second World War. And like anyone who's facing debts, the government has three options. It could look at spending, for example, pay freezes for public sector workers, such as civil servants, or indeed firefighters, or nurses. But that would hurt households, in particular, some of those workers who'd been on the front line. It could look at raising taxes, but that might just hit those businesses and households at a time when they're struggling to get back on their feet, and it could mean breaking some election promises. So what about borrowing more? It's tempting, and it is indeed very likely indeed, but there are a few problems with that. There is a limit to how much investors are comfortable with the government's borrowing before they start worrying about whether or not it's affordable to make the repayments. And these bonds are equivalent of long-term loans. So effectively, we'll be asking our grandchildren to pick up the tax. <laughs> there are no easy answers. In practice, tax and or spending will have to change. All of this means tough choices for Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor, but ultimately it's all of us who will have to pay the bills, perhaps at the point where we least fancy it or can least afford it.